In our two most recent updates to Thrive Architect, we've introduced six changes that make the plugin easier and faster to use. Here's what's new. Number one, you can choose the position of background images. Here we have a background section with an image. And as you can see here, we can choose the vertical and horizontal alignment of this image. You can anchor the image to any of these points or vertically and horizontally center align it. And the difference this makes becomes especially apparent as the screen sizes change. Here we have three different background sections with the same image and different alignments. And as you can see, it makes a difference, especially on smaller screens, where this alignment option gives you more control over what stays visible and what stays in the frame on different screen sizes. Number two, whenever you click outside of an options box, the changes you made are saved. For example, if we have this icon here, if I choose a color, I have to change the color and I click outside of this options box without clicking apply, the change is still applied. This is now true for every one of these options boxes. So whenever you make a change in one of these boxes and you click outside, the change is saved. And if you decide that you didn't want to apply the change, you can use the undo function, which is here, or using control and Z. Number three, all non-text elements are now draggable from anywhere. So on an element, you have a drag handle here that you can use to move it. But if the element is not text, then you can move it from anywhere. So clicking and dragging anywhere inside an image or inside an icon or anything that isn't text will initiate drag and drop. That means that whenever you click and drag, there's always going to be something that happens. If you click and drag on text, then you select that text. And if you click and drag on anything that isn't text, then you initiate drag and drop. Number four, you can now drag and duplicate in one move. So speaking of drag and drop, if you press the Alt key on your keyboard and then drag and drop, what you do is you create a duplicate of the element you dropped in the drop location. So this gives you a new and faster way to not only create duplicate, but also place that duplicate in a specific place on the canvas. Number five, improved button options. When you select a button, we now have a slightly changed interface here. We have replaced the button size slider with a list of choices. The slider wasn't working quite the way we wanted. So now we have preset sizes. And of course you can still further adjust the size using the button width as well as padding. So we can always add more size by adding padding or the slider or any of these preset sizes. In addition, it's now easier to add an icon. You simply click here and you can edit this icon directly as a separate element. So we can select the icon inside the button. And from here, we can apply icon size separately. We can give the icon a background, padding, borders, everything you can do with an icon on canvas, you can also do with an icon inside the button. This of course opens up new design possibilities. And finally, number six, Vertical alignment options are now available inside background sections and content boxes and not just inside columns. So here, if we have a background section, if we change the height of this section to make more of the image visible, by default, the text will be at the top of this content area. But what we can do is we can align it to the center or to the bottom of this area, and it will stay center aligned if we change the size here. And it will also stay center aligned in case we add more text. So as you can see, as a new line appears, it is still adjusted to stay in the center. And this is also true for smaller screen sizes where this way it might break onto more lines, it will always stay center aligned. So that is for background sections and boxes, you have this vertical position option that you already had before in column layouts. This will apply to anything inside the area. So if we add our icon right here, then the icon and the text together as a unit will be centered inside the entire area. Important note for advanced users, the float function does not work together with vertical alignment. Float is a function by which usually you can get several items to align next to each other on the same line. However, this is incompatible with vertical alignments. This isn't our fault. This is not something we can fix. So this is something you have to be aware of. If you want to use the float feature inside a container that has vertical alignments, you have to put the elements that you want to float in a separate content box inside the main container. So there you go. Those are the six ways in which we've made Thrive Architect faster and easier to use. Let us know if you love them or hate them or what else you would like to see by leaving a comment below.